What is up, survivors? We're back with another top five build location. This time we're actually on Aberration. So again, this is the top five, not necessarily any specific order, just reasons of why I typically pick these locations, locations that I really like. Of course, there's a mess of other locations being as this is probably one of my favorite maps, but let's get into it. All right, so we're sitting here at the first one on the list, and this is number five. Um, we're sitting here at about 4417-ish, but basically where all three of these rings are in the green area here, um, I like this area for a lot of different reasons. There's not a whole lot of hostility going on around here. It's a nice flat area that you could build in. Um, some basic resources are definitely nearby as long as some of the more advanced ones. You have plenty of room for growth and you can even build up top instead of down below if you wanted to. This has, uh, this has promised to make something, you can make something definitely more gigantic in here and then you have the option to kind of incorporate some of these techie ruins in with it if you choose. Not a whole lot of high-end resources in this area, but that's kind of a plague of aberration in general until you get down to lower areas or on the surface areas. But this is definitely one of the spots, especially earlier on, or even later on when you get access to things like rock drakes and basilisks to kind of help you bring resources back and forth. This is definitely one of my favorite ones, right, y'all? All right, on to the next one. So just down the hill, so our first spot was actually up there just down the hill here and this is actually one of the ones that i like the most i think is we're sitting at 42 about 27. i'm right here on right below these ruins let me get up a little bit so there's the waterfalls down there you have this pond here you actually have an artifact cave on the other side this is a nice little area so what do we have around here we have the are one of the artifact caves right there right around the corner from us we have the ocean here that has um so a little bit of pearls but some other things as well um, we have some definitely plenty of rocks and stone, all that good stuff. It's a bit more hostile, so you're going to have to be a little bit more careful with how you build. Maybe you could do like cliff platforms up here or even build up here on the upper level to kind of avoid some of that for the time being. But once you get some base defenses and a pretty standard sized base, you can pretty much live out here with no real threats or issues. Um, what else do we have here? We have plenty of stuff. So obviously having water access to water is super useful. Again, we have access to pearls down here, and there will be trilobites that spawn down here periodically too to get some chitin and you know, some pearls and a little bit of oil from them as well. This little island out here does offer crystal and metal as well. And the, in the artifact cave down here, there's crystal and metal and a little bit of obsidian down in there as well. Plus, you get access to glow tails, which are in here. Glow tails are kind of a pain in the butt to get sometimes in this map, but they're definitely in that cave and not too difficult to get to access to that is cool plus you have the cave loot drops um you got a couple loot drop loot spawns that spawn the one that's in the water here and then you have a couple back behind you um it's a pretty set not it's not too central per se um obviously we're not too central we're definitely more on the left hand side of things but on the west end of things but i like this spot for a lot of different reasons like i said for the resources that are here for the location for the water location the plant nearby a lot of the early game resources and even some of the mid to late games are sitting right here for you. It doesn't require a whole lot of in and out and you're not near the blue or red area if you don't want to be in those areas. Moving on. One of the nifty things about Aberration, especially this map, is all these different elevations of cliff networks that you can play on and build on and explore. And while I think it's fun to explore them and I think it's fun to run around on them, I find it kind of a pain sometimes to build up there if you don't have access to rock drakes and things that are gonna get you up and downhill without elevators and things like that. Which is why most of the build locations that I suggested here are definitely more on the lower end, on the lower ground level. And this is actually one of my favorite spots too, down here at 48, 40, 48 basically. So what we're dealing with is the waterfall that basically trickles down into the bioluminescent area. Um, this location is not necessarily optimal for the creatures that are here, but if you're able to build something to keep you safe, maybe up on this ledge by the charge node, you could do, it's going to be a little bit risky for you early on, but you're going to have a lot of resources here. There's metal deposits on this side of you. There's metal deposits on the cliff edge over here too. Um, the bioluminescent metal nodes that have the little blue lights in them, basically, um, Plenty of that. Uh, we have the pond here, so you have plenty of access to water and all the stuff in there. Um, there's going to be some other metal nodes way up behind you. Up top of here, there's going to be metal nodes and charge nodes and all that good stuff. Definitely good to be near charge nodes on this map for sure. Uh, that is, yeah, yep. So your green gems are down here too. This can get a little wonky though, mainly because there's so many spinos and carquinos that will spawn in this riverbed. But if you get yourself pretty defensible, especially up on this cliff where they can't get to you, it's a fairly safe spot. And again, you have access to most of your resources too. 
The other reason why I like this area is because it, there's a there's a ramp going straight down into the bioluminescent area from here so you can take your land diners right down. So just across the river and I can zoom out a little bit. So if you build in that general location across the river and there you go down the hill right into the bioluminescent area. Super easy uh, point to go down in there from. I really like it. Um, it's probably one of the ones that I've used the most just because of its accessibility. And then if you wanted to get crazier later on, you can easily get to the red area. As you can see, there's the, the tech ruins going down into the red area as well. So you can definitely, once you get to rock drake status, it would be super easy. Or even if you're hunting rock drakes, you can get down into the red area from this side pretty easily. You have access to a lot of different points. Um, the only bummer about this one, especially being in the greened area, is your lack of surface access. If you're trying to get out on the surface, the only way the closest one from this point is going to be kind of all the way on the other side. Uh, do, 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 all the way over here. That's going to be your closest access to the surface over here at 2762. So it's definitely a little bit riskier um, as far as getting it. Well, not necessarily riskier, but it's definitely more time consuming when you're getting to that point. But I do like the area. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's really cool that it overlooks the bioluminescent area. It's a really gorgeous biome in general. And this would be number three for me, right around this area, 40, 47. All right, so I am gamut up for number four. And the reason why is because it's very dark down here. As you can see, if I gamut down, it's like super, super, super dark. And we're in the bioluminescent area at around 52, 76, 77. But really where I like to build at is right up in this back area, which is 53, 78. Um, it's dark in here and it's kind of hard to see with the gamma being what it is, but essentially what you have and hold on, let's, uh, let's fix this issue real quick. Let's, uh, all right, let's fix this issue with some glow sticks so we can kind of light this area up and you can see what I'm talking about down here. And just toss a bunch of these around a little bit easier to see, I'm trying to help you guys out a little bit gonna look a little obnoxious but hey it'll work like a little rave party going on down here anywho this is what we're looking at this general area up here i like this area because i'm backed up to a certain point right so there's really only two avenues that creatures are going to come up and get me they're going to come up from this ramp or they're going to come up from this ramp now obviously we're building in the bioluminescent area so make sure you have things to repel nameless things like the the plant species z that's down here or charge lights or charge animals or charge them like all that stuff you're going to need all that stuff to keep nameless off your butt but the nice thing about this area is that you do have plenty of metal nodes up here you have obsidian up here you have plenty of those resources down in this bottom area you also have access to all sorts of wildlife that would normally be a pain in the butt but if you're if you're usually when you're coming down to this area you probably already have things like maybe like a spino or even a carquinos to kind of go fishing through this uh, because there's jellyfish down here in numbers you have access to biotoxin there's also leeches and trilobites down here to access for things like oil and and pearl access as well so that stuff's going to be all over the place down there for you to go get um you have there's a couple of gas geysers out here as well so you have access to, yep here we go there's a couple of gas geysers out here as well. So you can put your gas outlets down here as well. Um, some gem some gem deposits here too. There's a lot of stuff going on in this area. It's definitely a bit more dangerous as opposed to the green area. But I this is probably one of my favorite blue areas to spawn in or to play in. Uh, mainly because it's just very easy to, e easily defendable. If you kind of preemptively build some things to keep the nameless at bay so that you don't have anything like nameless or reaper king showing up. You can definitely you can easily destroy you can easily protect yourself with just a few dino gates on the other side of this until you get something a bit more sta established um, and even if you don't have some big guys if you just have some big guns it would be super easy for you to hunt those things right from the top of this guy here you'd be able to full see everything down there in front of you um, i've used this area quite a few times um, the only the only thing to watch for periodically is sometimes you'll get sporadic rock drakes that will come this way but again if you have some protection up on this end you should be good anyhow that's uh that's my spot down here at 5478 and i'm a fan i like this area i would highly suggest trying this one out if you like to build in the bioluminescent area but you're worried about getting assaulted by everything and their mother all right we're gonna throw some charge lights down for this one too just to kind of give you a feel this is more of a general area build build location so much as not so much as an actual specific spot and i'll show you guys why let's get some lights down here so it's not too terribly dark you can kind of see what's going on 
basically we're sitting at 5372 it's not too terribly far away from our last location um obviously all your resources are going to be pretty much nearby but as you can see this is a very hostile environment we have rock streaks flying around we have carquinos we have uh megalosaurus that are hanging around down here this is not a happy location this is definitely a location that you want to come into um, with some plan in action what you can actually do is build up in here which usually tends to be the more safer of the regions and we're sitting at 5173 mainly because i'm kind of backed up to the edge of a wall here and there's only a couple different places i have to try to guard it keeps me a little bit safer um that's usually where i would typically build at but really anywhere along this edge having access to water right by you and then everything that's in the water as you can see there's pearls and a lot of other things all the end game resources are down here too i'm gonna turn the gam up so it's gonna be a little bit blown out but at least you guys can see what's going on um right around this area too this is another good spot that i that i typically like is 5773 it's, you don't have really the space for a huge base, but if you're doing like a small to medium build, it's not a cool, it's not a bad location. Aesthetically, I think it looks awesome with these giant crystal pillars coming down into the water. You're not too far away from that biome either. Of course, there's an earthquake going on. There's always something that happens whenever we're recording. Anywho, um, the other reason why I like this, lo the why this location, because it butts right up to the red area. I can immediately come right into the red area biome right here, and it can be kind of a pain to get up and down out of that red area without some access to things like rock drakes or other instant, other some sort of flyer-based creature. You know, aberration doesn't have flyers, but things like rock drakes make it super helpful. But you're going to need access to red gems fairly on, right? So the idea is that I can come from my base right here and drop right into the red area and there's going to be red crystals around here sporadically as well i'm going to gamma up over here so you guys can again see what's going on um, but you have the, the element lava fall here and then right up the hill there's red crystals to harvest for red gems up and down the hill and you're in the red area as well so you find the reaper queens and your rock drakes and all that crazy stuff down there too uh, it's easy land access is pretty much why I like it. Now you could do something really nut, nut bar and kind of make some sort of elevator platform because this is right at the other, the other area that I was showing you guys before. You could do something like a crazy elevator platform or cliff platforms that connect and kind of make a stairway down. But there's also a land bridge that comes down here. So let me back up so you guys can see what's going on. So this was the first, uh, first blue location that we talked about, right? And if I come out of this blue location and skitter around... There's this land ramp that comes down, which brings me down a considerable amount. Now you'd have to go weasel your way in and around and in and around to kind of get all the way down here, but something simple like some sort of elevator or cliff with stairs mounted to it, we could bring you down here, it could bring you right down in this into this blue area, and going down here is the exact area that we just that we just talked about for number five. So these two are definitely close to each other, just like the first two were close to each other, but there's a reasons for that. I think it logistically logistically this is probably one of the better ones um obviously hostility wise it's probably one of the worst ones but if you're decently established they can get here with some decent defenses put up when you get over here this would make for a pretty good location mainly because access to the red area you know the red area is going to be where your end game stuff is happening and where you're going to need to go to a lot of times and being able to just poof you're in the red area pretty quickly is super duper duper useful Anywho, guys, that's it. That's my top five out here in Aberration. Obviously, there's a million other locations on this map that are really, really fun to build and really, really good to build at. These are just the ones that I've typically had the best experience with building on, but feel free to shoot something in the comments. Maybe there's a location that you like better or that works for you better. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies to this map that you can find. I find that I've played this map quite a deal, but every time I go back and do and really do some exploring, there's always another location that I find that looks really cool. But these are just the top five for me that seem to work the best for me. There's a million other spots, but this video would be hours long if we went through every single one of them. But that's all I got, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you on the next one.